right, welcome back to this next session of our Quick Coach series. This is where we take a certification. Today, we'll take the PL900 certification and go through one section of that certification with a unsuspecting student. My unsuspecting student today is Austin. Austin, uh, you want to introduce yourself? But what kind of experience do you have on the Power Platform so far? Uh, with the Power Platform, kind of focused on like Power BI a little bit. So I have like a little bit of background there, but never made a Power App or a Power Automate Flow or any of that other gotcha. stuff that's on there, I think. So, so you're more uh, more data platform, more Azure side. For sure. Gotcha. Azure, Fabric now, uh, going through Synapse, done some of that stuff before, but Welcome. none of the uh, low code tool stuff uh, in the uh, Power Platform. Awesome. Welcome to my world then. <laughs> so we're going to do this in Cert XP. It's a way of kind of gamify. Uh, your journey of certification and making it for you to bite-sized test. In this, we'll ask Austin a question, have him answer it, and then we'll explain why the question is right or wrong as we go through each of these. So to start with, we'll open up our, our uh, on-demand platform. You'll notice there is actually is a PL900 uh, class here as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and select the, the little hamburger menu here and select uh, Cert XP, which has us in beta right now, but it's, it's we're actually building out a lot of certifications um, right now. And look at this, our first one is PL900. This will make you a Power Platform Associate, Fundamentals Associate once you're done with this. Let's go ahead and start this now. You'll notice there's a lot of levels here and different, a whole bunch of different sections. The today's section is more on the generic terminology defining the business purpose of certain types of pieces here. So you'll notice I have a final boss level at the top here to get through. But in my case, we'll go through this first one that looks like I failed already. I, just, I, I've run this over and over again and I don't, um, I don't actually uh, answer it right, it's kind of go through it. <laughs> so uh, you have not seen this before though, right? It's your no, first time no, looking at this? No, never okay. done anything with PL900. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and look at this first one, level one, one. So let's tackle our first question out of the gate. There's, there's 10 questions and if you get one wrong, we will have a redemption period at the end as well to try this. So first question, how does Power Virtual Agents contribute to reducing the workload of agents in the customer service department within Dynamics 365. Okay, so I've heard of Power Virtual Agents before. I think it's like kind of like the Copilot Studio from is, what I've heard. Yeah, it's, it's been rebranded now. So okay. it's a little bit older name, but they still have this name on the certification test. Yeah, so um, embedding visuals, don't think it's that external facing sites, maybe not. Answering specific questions, maybe use the agent to do that. So I'm gonna go with B, answering specific customer questions. Let's see how you did. Hey, you got it right. Nice. So absolutely, this, uh, this will allow your customers to interface with this, this, this application, the application data. Uh, Copilot Studio, which used to be called Power Virtual Agents, allows them to ask questions on any type of channel, about many channels like Facebook or uh, your website. You can also use things like Teams as well to answer those questions. Those questions can also trigger actions inside there. And what you're seeing on your screen now is our Quick Coach video. This will actually be a video of me in this case, uh, walking you through why this is the right answer. Let's keep on going. One thing you'll notice also on this is you can actually get the audio of this. You can hear our little, our little guy here uh, talking through the questions or you can have it to autoplay here as well. What does, Austin, the Power Platform Admin Center Analytics section provide information about? Oh man, uh, the admin center analytics tells me maybe it's not so much about the data and the actual like metadata so much. Uh, maybe it's about like the capacity statistics or the dataverse analytics. Since we're talking about analytics, I'll go be again dataverse analytics. All right, let's see how you did. Oh, you're two for two. <laughs> the admin center gives you a whole lot of information. Licensing is not part of that yet in that, in that analytics section but it lets you know how much capacity you're spending on, on things like uh, like Dataverse, who is using it, how much, how much uh, the, the API calls have been needing up and all those kind of goodies. Let's keep on going. All right, Austin, question number three here. What is the main function of Power Apps within the Power Platform? This should be a, a gimme here. Okay, so Power Apps, pretty sure making applications uh, within Power Platform. So just looking at these, I think it's gonna be uh, B again, just uh, B every time maybe is the best choice. Develop rapid low code custom apps. And funny enough, these, these answers are randomized too as far as how, <laughs> how it randomizes, so which it is, it is correct. Yeah, Power Apps in the Power Platform family is for internal applications. You can invite external people into those applications, but you have to license them. For external folks, you want to use things like Power Pages uh, that will allow anonymous users or those users that are authenticated to access your application also. Awesome. Let's keep on going. All right, here we go. You wish to read handwritten data out of a form for processing. 
which power platform component must you use uh, to accomplish this? Ooh, handwritten data. That sounds cool. Um, well, I don't think Power BI visualizations are that much. Maybe not virtual agents. Um, maybe AI Builder. Let's go with AI Builder. All right. Well, B again, which is funny. <laughs> All right. The random the random monster is not uh, working in our favor today because you are correct. Oh, man. Awesome. Yes. The AI Builder has a number of algorithms you can use, but one of them is for detecting objects. One is for handwritten information. So you can use this to pull information out of a tax record, for example, and load that into Dataverse or into any of the data database. It can also be used for processing data out of a form, whether it be handwritten or typed information in there. Uh, AI Builder is pretty awesome. And you get AI Builder, by the way, as part of your Power Apps license. You get a certain amount of uh, capacity for that. All right, Austin, you're killing it so far. Which challenge does the Power Platform address according to the uh, provided information? So, slow implementation of minor changes, decreased workforce expectations, lack of demand, increased cost, the challenge that it faces. Um, let's go with slow implementation of minor changes. Don't really know this one at all. All right, here we go. Let's try this. Let's try this one. Yeah, in this uh, case, it is increased cost of custom development. If you've been in a, in a business environment, like many of you watching this right now, you've dealt with uh, the, the poor developers are working as hard as they can to catch up with the demands of the organization. Uh, Power Platform allows you to build workflows, uh, uh, websites, applications, chatbots, even analytics very, very rapidly. So it reduces the amount and kind of democratizes that across your entire organization. So let's go to our next question, Austin. I got a chance to redeem that at the end though, right? You do, absolutely. Okay. All right, what is the purpose of Dataverse for Teams within Microsoft Teams? Dataverse for Teams, these are getting tough as we go along. So I've, I know it has to do with Teams, right? So I'm gonna have to assume the question has to do something with that. Let's go with creating workflows within the Teams environment. Okay, while that is correct, this is a classic classic Microsoft certification word juju here. Mm. Uh, in actuality, it's, it's doing all the above. It's creating oh. apps, bots, flows, and even things like Power BI can be hosted there. Every Teams environment that you have can have up to a two gig Dataverse database inside of it. And that can support up to a million records in a given table. Dataverse for Teams also allows you to do things like row level security where you can only access your own data but this is all included in your office license. So doing this actually gives you a lot of flexibility in this. So it's not just the flow side, but it also includes the other piece. This is one of the major challenges when you're taking these certification tests. Sometimes they kind of get a really word ninja almost in yeah. these cases. Yeah. You're killing it though so far. How does Power BI tab, oh, there we go, and the Microsoft Teams enhance collaboration and reporting? Okay, I think I got this one right from the get-go. It allows users to share interactive Power BI content in Teams. All right, let's see how you did. Nailed it. Yes. Yes, exactly. So the Power BI tab will allow you to interface with any kind of Power BI report right inside of Teams. So you want to put that data where the user's already at. And we use this actually internally, don't we, Austin? Yes, so we we've do. got Power BI reports all over the place. But our most important reports we put inside of Teams because that's, that's where our users are spending all their time at. All right, almost there, Austin. Which component of the Power Platform is specifically designed for creating chatbots in a, in a low code or no code graphical interface? So again, we talked about this one earlier, so I'm kind of learning all these terminologies, Copilot Studio or formerly known as Power Virtual Agents. Ah, you are learning here. You nailed it. Copilot Studio, which was called Power, uh, the uh, Power Virtual Agents, allows you to create a whole bunch of really cool chatbots, embed them inside of Facebook, your Teams environment, or inside of your website as well, among other interfaces like that. Uh, there's other types of chat technology you can use also inside of Azure. You know, there's, there's good stuff on bot frameworks and those kind of things as well. Mm -hmm. All right, we're down to our last two questions. A business wants to develop an application by using the Microsoft Power Platform. The application should be able to send invoices to customers, to clients. Uh, you need to automate the process of sending invoices. What should you use? Oh, so a word stuck out to me there. I think that automate word potentially is a, a big key signifier of what the answer should be. Let's go with power automate. All right, sounds good. 
There are really a few ways you can do this, but probably the most correct answer is the one you chose. Uh, the automation word is probably a key word there. Uh, the reason why Power Automate might make the most sense here is because you might have to do other stuff inside that workflow. While you can send emails inside of things like Power Apps, by doing it Power Automate, in this case, you might have other types of automation and approvals and those kind of things you wish to do. So from the, from a certification side, generally lean the Power Automate side. In the real world, you might do more uh, Power Apps in that case also. All right, Austin, our final question here. A business uses Microsoft Power Platform. You need to enable users to ask questions in a natural language, phrases, to be, uh, uh, to be able to create support requests for those phrases. Which two Power, Microsoft Power Platform components should you use? Okay, so multi-select here. Let me think about this. Well, I know that I need to maybe ask with natural language, so maybe it's something like virtual agents, like asking a chatbot. Okay. And then the other thing potentially would be to send a request. So there's some sort of action after that, Power Automate. So I'll go A and B on this a one and B? see what I got. You are absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned before, Power, Vir sorry, Power Virtual Agents now called Copilot Studio because of their Copilot uh, branding and a whole bunch of extra GPT stuff coming in now, allows you to handle the chat side. However, if there's some type of actions that you wanna do, like creating a, a case, sending an email from that chat session, that's where those actions are gonna require Power Automate at this time. Great job, Austin. Let's take a look at what we have. I think only two redemption questions. Okay. Let's go. We are back to back to there again. Uh, how do you handle the uh, 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 the challenge of address? What, what challenge does Power Platform address? I remember it's all about the money. So I'm going to say increased costs for custom applications. Oh, you nailed it. All right, here we go. What is the purpose of Dataverse Teams in Power Platform? And, well, uh, teams. Yeah, last time I picked just one of them, but I remember it's building everything, building custom apps, bots, and flows with oh, teams. Oh, there we go. That, oh, it's a, moved. Yeah. As you can see, that it is random. <laughs> It is right. All right, there we go. Awesome. And there you go. You did 80% there, I believe, hey, right? I'll take Nailed it. Nailed it. Yes. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us today for this quick coach session. Uh, you can find Cert XP as part of our on demand platform. You can find that at pragmaticworks.com. And we have, this is one of our many sessions we're going to do. If you enjoyed this and want to get more information like this, please do subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notified of future videos. Austin, great job today. Thank and you. Thanks Brian. for, uh, thanks for uh, hanging with me. Absolutely. Have a great day and thanks for watching.